Hello, I hope you're all doing well. Um, this is our last uh, sort of learning activity uh, discussion that we'll have. Again, these are not tested. These are things, uh, you won't be tested on these, but these are things I think that are very beneficial for your uh, career. Uh, please open up the, the PowerPoint that accompanies this short talk, and I think it, it helps. Uh, basically, you know, it's semi-humorous is how to ruin your career. You don't want to ruin your career. However, there are uh, amazing ways that people find to ruin their careers and, ha and, and negatively impact how they can go forward. And I think this quick look will uh, see, look at these and see if there's some way that we can avoid those. Now, you think that this will never happen. I'll never find myself dancing on, the, on a table uh, inebriated. But, you know, I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes, and uh, you, the you person would never have believed they would do that, but they did. And there are all sorts of things that, that can go along with that. But let's take a quick uh, look at that. There, are, I've got a, a, a couple pages here of things. I, I'm not going to go over all of them. However, I'll go over some because they are they're useful. Um, one way to ruin your career is to play politics. If you work hard on building strong relationships, it, it is very different from instigating conflict, choosing sides, undermining colleagues, etc. I have to say that when you're younger and when you're in school, the competition is different from work competition. It's uh, it, it's fine, you know, it, it happens. However, when you're at work, you're not competing against the other people, you're competing against the, the, your competitors or the other companies. Uh, you'll find an amazing level of cooperation working together in business. For example, if you do things like a, um, a group project in college, basically, Everybody either loves them or hates them. The people that hate group products projects are the ones that do all the work. People that love them are the ones that know somebody else will do all the work so they can benefit from getting the grade. That doesn't happen in business. If you don't pull your weight, you're out. Everybody pulls their weight, everybody goes the extra mile in order to help the whole thing go forward. It's a big difference. So in work, make sure that you don't play politics. You stay out of those things. Don't spread rumors. Don't say things that aren't, you know. It, it doesn't help anyone to be a rumor spreader and also that'll stay with you for forever that you're that kind of person come and make sure you're authentic uh, you don't want to over promise and under deliver in business uh, with your colleagues or with clients you don't want to miss deadlines again you know when you're in school you know obviously people i get all the time you know i couldn't do this because of that you know in, in business there's just no excuses there there is no um it didn't happen. If if certain if, if you can't make a deadline because of something real, make sure you tell everybody, and, and everybody is usually fine with it. I can't do this because of this. I mean, I won't make it. Make sure you say it because uh, it's unexpected to miss deadlines. You want to do that. Uh, it's not a good idea to be complacent. In business, you might think, you know, I'm not. There, there are a whole bunch of companies here. I'm not. Maybe I'm not the best. I'm not the worst. I'm kind of in the middle. And you think, well, I can just kind of cruise along. That's not the case. Uh, you want to be always at the far end of the comp uh, of the positive contributors because um, when things happen, when things uh, go wrong, or when businesses cut back or under attack or whatever, there are any number of reasons why certain people are, are uh, chosen to move forward and some people are left behind. And the middle of the pack is not a good place to be. You always want to be at the at the front. You know, it's like. Um, if you ever played any kind of sports teams and you had to run laps, you know, you run laps, everybody's running laps, but it's always a good idea to be the first five guys, you know, be the first five people that finish up those laps. Uh, it, you don't have to run that much harder. You just have to run in front. And the coach always notices who the first five or 10, uh, you know, uh, people are that come across the line when just running laps. So do that kind of thing. Don't fear change. Change is a, is a way of life and you should embrace that to the extent you can. Um, and, and you and you a few things a low the low emotional intelligence uh, you know that'll mess up your career you you cannot demonstrate the way you feel around the office people do it but it's ineffective you can't uh, people can't look and say oh there guy's bored irritated or or something have an emotional outburst you belittling others having you know ang anger flare up shouting you know people think well you know I I, I just don't want to hold it in well you better. It's, the workplace is one of respect, mutual admiration, mutual goodwill, helping each other get ahead, and there really isn't any place for uh, allowing your feelings and for your emotions to, to disrupt other people and disrupt the workflow. You don't want to get a uh, reputation as someone who um, plays politics upwards. If a boss employee really to work, it has to be based on authenticity. Um, you, you make sure you realize that first impressions 
do matter. Uh, you know, people will say that they decide whether to hire somebody in a second. Uh, it, it makes a big difference. When you're first, your first day in a job, that's, that's going to define so much. The first moment you walk in that interview, how you dress, how you look, what you think, your, 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 your whole attitude, it makes a difference. You know, first impression, that's the way human beings are. There's a lot there because there's a lot put into it. And you say, well, I didn't mean that. Well, actually, you probably did. That's really, if you're giving that first impression, that's probably the, what you intended to give. So think it over. Make sure you're, you realize the first impressions uh, do matter a lot. Uh, one another thing is, that if you want to ruin your career, you can limit how much you're going to work. You say, I, I work this far, but not that far. You know, that doesn't work, uh, you, especially in the beginning. What you want to do is show that you are, you are really uh, dependable, capable. You can beat a lot of stuff piled on you, and you can produce. Later on, you know, you get a good reputation. Maybe you can start picking and choosing how much you want to do. Uh, but the, the best workers are ones that just keep, or that work really hard. You know, my dad always told me when I first started, do your work at night as much as you can. That way you're available in the day to take on more stuff. It works. You really want to be a person that they can look to and, and give stuff to and you can, and you can get it done. So um, that, that really makes a difference. Uh, next page there. Um, you know, it, remember, it, it's a very common thing. People say all the time, you know, make your boss look good. It's true, but people don't do it. I don't know why they don't do it. Find out what your boss's objectives are, what their goals are, what he or she will be judged on and say, how can I help you reach that? You, you know, you're right now, that's, that's who you work for. That's what you're doing. You want to help them get ahead. If, if, if you make that work, it'll make, it'll make uh, you work. So we have to think. You can't just say, I, I'm doing this. I'm assuming that's what they're doing. I, I ask them, what? is it important what are your goals how can i help you achieve your goals and and be sincere not you're not trying to, it, it, it works for everybody if if there's a disconnect and, and lack of alignment in the different goals at the different levels you come in as a work as well and you won't do as well in your business chit chat and gossip man i'll tell you you know nobody the worst the people get very upset if they think somebody else is working less uh than they are even if it's only a perception you don't want to be seen online shopping, talking on your phone, meeting, doing it any more than anybody else. It's not the place at work. You have all day long to do other things and, and after work, but you cannot be seen as chit-chatting, talking. It, you, you want to make sure that people don't resent you for, for not working as much as, as they are. Um, send emails when angry is not good. Uh, dishonest lying, you don't want to, in, in this country, in a lot of countries, but this one in particular, it's very difficult to get over a line. And once you have that uh, perception, it takes a long, long time, if ever, that you can overcome it. Work, like all relations, is based on trust. People need to count on each other, uh, especially in business. You need, when somebody says something, it has to be there. I'll go so far to say, don't ask other people to lie for you. If you're, if someone, if, if, the, if, if the secretary picks up the phone and says, it's so-and-so, and you say, tell him I'm not here, that's really bad. You're, you're lying and you're asking someone else to lie for you. Don't do that. Don't pick up the phone and say, oh, I was just working on your product. I haven't done it yet. If you haven't been working on it, people will under, they know when you're telling the truth or not already. And they will understand if you say, you know what? I've been so busy. I have not gotten to your thing yet. I will get to it in an hour from now and I'll have it done. That's acceptable. Or just tell them, look, I, you know, let me talk to them. I'll talk to them. I, I'm not, I know what you want. I'm, I'm not quite uh, there yet with that. But at least you're not lying or telling us somebody else a lie for you. It's really, uh, a negative thing to be perceived as a person that's not tr trustworthy. Of course, any kind of bad behavior, any antisocial uh, uh, behavior, you don't want to be any comment. On social media, you, I don't, you, I'm sure you realize, but no, every time you're interviewed now, everybody, there's going to be a, 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 there will be several people that are going to look at all your social media uh, accounts, everything you put up on, on every form you use and they're going to and it's going to be part of the discussion of whether they should hire you or not will be what they see on Facebook what they see on you know Instagram Snapchat whatever you happen to use and whatever is current these days will be noticed there are a lot of different programs that that, that companies use that, that, that look into these things and and they will and really I've been there a hundred times where you sit around and you look at all these things and say what are we dealing with here you know what kind of person is this you know and if, and if you're up against a head-to-head -head competition with somebody else you know, think about that. What what do I have on there? What am I saying? What what kind of you know proclamation? What kind of, if if you're not showing respect for people or you're bullying? I mean, you know, that's not going to work. So um, think about what you have on social media and realize that every single thing that you publish, that you post on public thing, will be part of the hire and the career building process. Um, 
you don't want to choose a career company without doing your homework. You know, it's not every company is not the same. Some of them are very difficult to work for, so make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, don't want to badmouth your boss. You know your coworkers. Um, you don't want to consider your workplace a dating site. You know that happens. It's fine. It, people that are also going to meet somebody, people will say. However, make sure that's not what you're there for, and it and it doesn't. Be, that's not why you're working, or you're or you're spending a lot of time uh, working on relationships that you shouldn't be doing, and and it can be worse. You don't want to have uh, in, um, improper uh, relationships with other people at work. That, uh, that's not good. You don't engage in harassment of any kind, any lack of respect, any type of harassment, any way you make somebody else feel bad, nervous, scared, under the gun, under pressure like that is incorrect. You don't want to do it. Um, sometimes you're going to, well, a person too sensitive, that, no excuse. You, 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 you cannot uh, overstep those boundaries. I know you've studied this a million times, but, but I just emphasize when it comes in a workplace, you know, a good boss will watch that like a hawk. They will not allow their employees to be harassed by other employees and will stick up for them in ways you've never seen before. So make sure that's not you. Um, a couple of things. You don't want to stay at a job that you hate. At the same time, impatience can lose a lot of opportunities. I'll tell you something. You're young. You think, well, man, I can't do this. It'll go on forever. It doesn't go on forever. Things do change. By the time you do an organization chart, by the time you start sending it to people, it's already changed. Things do change. Maybe if you can't stand where you are, that's one thing. But if you think, well, you know what, things, if, if a few things change, give it a little time in general. Not always. I'm just saying in general, things do change. And you can lose opportunities through impatience. So let things play out a bit and be confident that things do change. You don't want to show up late all the time. You don't want to make excuses. You don't want to blame other people. You know, blame people for what you've done. That, does, that doesn't, doesn't work, um, um, et cetera. Okay. Uh, I think that's... Uh, the other thing is, the last thing is, you think you can have it all. You really can't. You know, you can't be have ten hobbies and work, play a few sports, uh, run uh, triathlons, and and uh, have five kids. You're taking to every uh, ballet, soccer practice, everything they have. You can't do it. You have to start thinking about what's important to me. What do I really need? What do I really like? What what is what do I really value? And maybe you say, I I will. I'm going to coach my. You know, I personally, I made up my mind. I was going to coach my kids in sports. How I did it, I have no idea. But it was a commitment that I made, and I would work extra, long, whatever it took. But I said, I'm going to do that. But yeah, you're not uh, doing that and going rock climbing or uh, deep sea fishing every weekend also. It, you have to start making some, some choices in your life, which you've already done all the time in your life now. But even more and say, what's really important to me? Are my relationships with my, my uh, spouse or my girlfriend, boyfriend, and you know, the future of things? And, and how much am I, what do I really need to commit to work? What hobbies are really important to me? Is my, you know, what things do I need to do for my physical fitness? Whatever happens to be that makes you happy, but it can't be at all. It can't do everything. So make sure what you're spending your time on is valid and, and really makes a sense to you and can really help you go forward and give you uh, that kind of peace of mind that you're looking for. All right, I hope that helps a bit. Um, I'm sure you can find a lot of other ways to ruin your career, but those are some major ones, and uh, let's try to stay, avoid those as you go forward. Thanks a lot.